In this video, we'll be hosting a simple web server locally on our Pico and connecting to that server both through an existing wireless network and by hosting a Wi-Fi network directly from the Pico itself. This is going to allow us to host a simple web page on a Pico that we can access through a browser on a phone or a computer. And from there, we can interact with the Pico through that web page. So we're gonna do this two ways. The first is through an existing network like your home Wi-Fi. We'll connect the Pico to an existing wireless network and then we'll host a web page that we can connect to with a client, which will be your phone or your computer. The Pico will serve the connected client a web page which might have buttons or sliders or pictures or even send some sensor data. And then on the device, we can interact with this web page. Say if we press a button, that device will send something called a request back to the Pico, which contains the information saying, that the button was pressed. And with that information on the Pico, we can do whatever we want from there. For example, we'll be creating a web page with an off and an on button to control the Pico's onboard LED. Now, an important thing here is that the way that we're setting this up, even if your wireless network has access to the internet, the Pico will only serve its web page locally, meaning that you can only access the Pico from a device connected on the same network. And then once we've got that set up, we'll go ahead and modify it to kind of take out the middleman and host the wireless network from the Pico itself, which is extremely easy. And of course, you can find the final code for all of this in the course page linked below. So starting off, we're gonna to need to import network and we're also going to need to import socket. And we'll import time because we'll be using some sleeps as well. Now I'm gonna start by copying over all the things from last demo. I'm just gonna quickly, briefly go over how they work. So if you wanna understand that fully, go and watch our previous video where we connect our Pico to the internet and query some web servers. So starting off, we declared some variables that held the credentials for our Wi-Fi network we'll be connecting to, and then we will copy over the function that actually connects our Pico to our wireless network. And again, this is really straightforward. The first line sets up an instance of it. The second line turns on the wireless hardware on the Pico. The third one tells the Pico to connect to the wireless network with the credentials we gave it. And then here we basically have some visual representation showing us what the Pico is doing. It's gonna keep printing that it's connecting until it's successfully connected to our wireless network. And then where our code starts, we're just going to try and connect and leave it at that. Let's give this a quick test. It's always good to test it in stages to isolate any errors you might have. And as you can see, we've successfully connected to our local network. Now I'm gonna go ahead here and create a function to open a socket on the Pico. Now we are getting into some really technical and dense networking terms here, but a socket is something that the Pico uses to allow other clients and devices to send and receive information with. So first we start by getting some address information for our socket that we'll use to set it up with. And then we'll create an instance of our socket and assign it to a variable similar to how we set up a pin. Then we take that address, bind it to the socket and tell the socket to start listening. And this means it's gonna start listening for any incoming connections. And this number here that we put three in just for this example is how many connections can be queued up while it's trying to connect to the socket. And then after all that, we're just gonna return our socket, which is the variable S. Now let's go ahead and just call that socket in our main part of our code. I'm just gonna call open socket, and that is going to open up the socket for us. So now we're gonna start handling devices connecting to our Pico and sending and receiving information. And we're gonna pop all of this inside of a try and accept structure just to deal with any errors that might arise. So our code's gonna start by trying to accept a client. And the way that we're doing it here in MicroPython is known as a blocking call. And long story short, it's not going to progress past this client equals s.accept until a client connects to our Pico and starts this process. Then we're gonna receive the request from the client, store it in a variable called request, and then turn it into a string, print it out, close the connection. To backtrack a little bit, I've just realized I've made a few spelling mistakes, mainly here in address. I can never spell that word correctly. I've also forgot to put a semicolon there. And down here, I have spelt accept incorrectly again. So now that we've set up our socket on our Pico to handle clients connecting to it, we should be able to test that through a browser on any device, as long as it's connected to the same network that the Pico is on. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that code and we connect it to our local network. And if you just punch in this IP that it gives you, we can see here that the Pico has printed out that request. We can see that something has tried to connect to our Pico. 
So starting off, let's create a function that's going to hold some HTML code that will be the web page that we're going to serve to a client. Now I'm not actually gonna write this HTML code from scratch. I'm gonna steal it from another guide we made doing a very similar thing with the Pico. And this is just an extremely simple page, no bells and whistles. We have two buttons here. This first button turns the light on and this second button turns the light off. And then we also have some text that's gonna be displayed on the page. And this is going to display the variable state, which I'm also going to need to put up in here in our function. And then after all that, we're just going to return the string of HTML, just like so. Now, if we come down to our main part of the code, let's call that function to generate the web page, and we're gonna feed in state, and then let's send that HTML code to our client, just like so. And then we're gonna to need to go up to the top here and declare the variable state, just initialize it so we have something to send to the page on the first run of it. We're also gonna to need to plug in one more line to this, and I'm just gonna copy and paste it because this is, a, this is probably the most technical part of this entire chapter. And long story short, this is going to send a response header to our client because some web browsers need this line to work. Without it, we get some errors and we could spend an entire video dissecting how this works, but for now, we're just gonna leave it as a black box. You, It just works and it's part of the code. And also if that fails, we're gonna want to close our client like so in our error handling try accept structure. Now, if we test that code, we can see that we get this dreaded error address already in use. Now, it wasn't really an issue last video, but when we're dealing with sockets and everything, you'll encounter these errors very commonly, especially if you maybe put like a HTML error in your page and you try and serve that, but it's very fixable. You just unplug the Pico for 10 to 15 seconds and plug it back in. And you might need to do that one or two times and power cycle it a couple of times to get it working again. But if the Pico is completely off and fresh and has been unplugged for a few minutes, you should be able to plug it in and it should work as long as the code is fine. Not work as in not throw any errors at you. And there's one more thing we need to do before we can test it. And that is that we're gonna add a while true loop here because without it, this is just gonna run through once, serve the page, close the connection, and that's that, we can't interact with it. So I'm just gonna nest all of that in, or oh, if I can spell it correctly as well, in a while true loop like so. So we'll plug it back in. And then if we run the code and let it connect to our wireless network, Come on, there we go. That is the same IP as before. Punch it in and we can see that we are now being served our web page from our Pico. And as you can see here, if we press a button, for example, the on button, a request is sent to the Pico. And if we take a look at it, there is a lot of information here nested in here somewhere. Right there is the request. And if I hit the off button, you can see that it changes to off. And these buttons sending these on and off phrases to our Pico, to the shell here, can actually be controlled through our HTML code, which we'll be changing in a later video to do some more complex things. But for now, we can send an off or on signal to our Pico through a web page, which is pretty darn cool. So let's do something even cooler with it and start controlling hardware with it. So first of all, let's clean up that request. All we really care about is this slash off here. So let's kind of remove everything that isn't part of that. We're gonna split up that request and then we're gonna try and grab the second element of it, which should be the slash off or the slash on, the actual request part of it that we want. Now that's not always gonna be there. For example, when we punch in the IP and we connect and we receive that web page. So we're gonna need that try and accept because it will throw an error if it's not there and that will crash our Pico. And in the accept, if it's not there, we're gonna use the pass keyword, which is gonna do nothing whatsoever. Now we're gonna print it. Now, if we run this code and let it connect to our network. Now, if we punch in that IP and if we press the on button, you can see that we just get this slash on command. If we press the off button, you can see that we also get the off command. And you can ignore this favicon.ico. It sometimes, depending on the browser you're using, will pop up. It's basically requesting this little tiny image here that it uses for the web page. You can write code to filter that out if you really need to, but we can just write code around it and ignore it. Now this split function is a mighty helpful little tool to use. And I think the best way to demo it is just in the shell here. 
let's say uh, this is a string like so. I'm just gonna assign it to a string called s. And now if I call s.split, whatever I put in the brackets here, it will split this string into different elements into a list. So if I say, I wanna split it along this r here, I'm gonna say split s along r. And as you can see, it split it before and after the r, but it does remove the r. What we're doing, however, we're calling just split with empty brackets. And what this is gonna do is it's going to split it along the space. So if I press that, it's gonna split it into different elements of this is a string. And in here, we're just gonna grab the second element of it. Remember it's indexed at zero, which is going to be the request. So now that we've done some string manipulation to get the request in this nice short and compact format, we now have a system where we press a button here and it updates a variable on the Pico. And from here, it's very easy to check if that variable request equals this, then do something. So let's do that and control the onboard LED. And this should hopefully be very familiar by now. We import pin, set up our LED instance, and then all we're going to do is we're gonna say if request equals on, or slash on with the question mark, make sure that that string exactly matches the request that is being received. We're gonna turn the LED on, and we're gonna set the state to on, which is what we're sending to the web page. Else if the request is slash off question mark, we're gonna do exactly the opposite. And if we run that and let it connect to our Wi-Fi network, where are we? There we go. That is the same IP. If we press the on button, the LED turns on. And if we press the off button, the LED turns off and we can keep doing that. And it's pretty darn responsive. If I bring the mouse in, you should be able to see that there's about a 300 millisecond delay between pressing the button on a computer, that request being sent over the wireless network to the Pico, and then turning on the hardware. Now, a common question asked right about now is, okay, I can connect to this web page through my local network. How can I connect to it outside of the network through the internet? And while this is possible through port forwarding, it opens up a can of worms relating to network security, and all of that is outside the scope of this course. If you want to use the Pico to send or receive data through the internet, the easiest way that provides you with a level of protection is through services like the Things Network or Adafruit IO, which uses MQTT. If you are interested, we have an MQTT guide linked below. It doesn't allow you to serve a web page like we're doing so here with the Pico, but you can get the same project end goals using it. And of course, through the internet. Now setting up a wireless access point from the Pico itself is incredibly easy and you could actually modify the connect function, just change a few little things there and it will work. But we're gonna go ahead and create a new function for that. And I'm gonna copy and paste a lot of the existing code from the connect function. So the first line is pretty much the same. It goes ahead and creates our instance, but this time it's for an access point instead. Then we tell the Pico to configure our wireless network. And the reason why we have to do SSID equals SSID ID and password equals password is because there's a lot of parameters that we can pass into this. And by specifying these parameters here, we don't have to give the full chain in the correct order. Then we activate our wireless hardware and we have the same while is it connecting loop just for a little bit of debugging to see what's going on. And then all we need to do is go down and instead of calling connect, we call AP setup instead. And if we run our code, you can see that it very quickly sets up that access point. That's one of the things I like about using an access point instead because it instantly turns on. Let's paste our IP address in, but first of all, we need to connect to that wireless network my Wi-Fi and punch in the password that we specify. If I can spell password one, sweet. And connect to that network. And as you can see, we're connected, but we obviously have no internet because this thing doesn't magically connect to the internet by hosting an access point. And if we enter that IP address, we get the same web page. If I grab the Pico, and it behaves exactly as it did before. But now, obviously, we're not using a existing wireless network. We're coming directly from the Pico. And there's pros and cons of connecting to an existing network versus hosting your own access point. If you connect the Pico to an existing network, you can go from browsing the internet to connecting to the Pico's IP without switching Wi-Fi. If you host it on the Pico, you obviously need to swap over to that non-internet connection Wi-Fi to use it. But that does come with advantages in that you don't need an existing wireless network. You just connect directly to the Pico. And we've actually created some projects where we've controlled the Pico with a phone just by connecting to the access 
this point that it hosts. Another thing is when you host it on the Pico, this IP address here ending in 0.4.1, it's going to be the same every time. It's the default address of the Pico. Well, that was quite a lot of new code and information. So for now, I think we'll leave it there. But currently we have the important framework of being able to connect to or create a network and then serve a web page from the Pico to a client. And next video, we will finish this off by providing some more advanced functionalities to that web page, maybe adding some sliders and control some PWM values with it. All right, three key takeaways. One, we can utilize sockets to send and receive information between the Pico and clients. Two, we can make the Pico serve a web page, and then we can use the requests that the client returns to control the Pico. And three, we can choose to run this connected to an existing network, or we can host an access point from the Pico itself.